We were just sitting here rejoicing because Carrie got a house and she ran here and just barely made it. But yes. praise God. And she got the house that she wanted that somebody else was going to get and she got it $50,000 less. Amen. So that was worth it. That was worth but it. But we are glad that you are with us tonight here for our Tuesday night live Bible study. Amen. <laughs> I don't know how long we were live. I don't know how long. Night. But anyway, we are glad that you are with us. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing, I believe, out of Ephesians chapter 3, a prayer that Paul prayed. Mm. And I believe it'll be a real blessing to you. But we want you to be a uh, participant tonight. And, share, and uh, Carrie is going to share with you about how you can participate and be a part. Amen. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a good night. We hope you're doing well. Uh, Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. It is live, which means you get to see everything, <laughs> and even <laughs> our mistakes right. at the beginning. But uh, this is live, which means you get to interact with us. So whatever form that you're watching us on right now, just go down to that chat section and send in your questions. And this is what makes these Bible studies so amazing is you get great teaching. Andrew's going to teach for about 30 minutes. And then our last 15 minutes, we're going to do as many question and answers that we get that we can do in our time. So please send those to us. We love hearing from you. It's a great opportunity to get those questions answered live and in the moment. So also what makes this live is that we have all these ministers standing by to minister to you. And so we have these prayer ministers that are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, well, five days a week, uh, and then on Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 to 6 at night that are ready to minister to you. So they love the Lord, love the Word, speak with power, authority, and we see lots of miracles with our prayer ministers. So please call us. We would love to interact and be a part of the miracles that God's wanting to do in your life right now. Also, um, what makes this Bible study interactive is that you can get the notes from every Tuesday Night Live Bible study if you sign up at awmi.net slash Bible study. What you do is you sign up. When you do that, we send notes out from whatever speaker, whether that's Andrew or one of our other amazing guest ministers. They'll send that out to you. So you'll want to get that because my Andrew always has more than enough that we can't even get fit in sometimes. And so you'll want to get those notes. Also, when you do that and you register, we'll register you for a free giveaway. So every Tuesday night we give a giveaway and this week we're giving a better way to pray. I love this, man. This overseas especially uh, riles up the religion yeah. in people and they're like, what? I've been praying wrong. Man, this will change your prayer life and how you talk to the Lord. It is super powerful. So if you have already registered said, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get that. Well, then also call our prayer ministers because not only are they there to pray for you, but you can get any of our material. You can ask, hey, I want to get that book and they'll tell you how to get our books. Plus reference you to other material that maybe you're needing to hear whether it's about healing or finances or family you can say hey what does Andrew have on this and we can reference you to the 200,000 plus hours of free material that we have available to all of you so our prayer ministers will be able to tell you how to do that but last week we gave how to become a water walker away and Carol Criswell Carol you won that so Carol we're going to get that out to you so congratulations so register this is a great Great book. Um, also live every day, we have a Karis Live Bible Say. So Monday through Friday. So you're joining us here on Tuesday. Uh, if you're one of our regulars, we love you. We're so glad you joined us. But if you're new, this is not the only time we do it. Mondays and Fridays at 10 o'clock in the morning. Then Tuesday and Thursday nights at 6 p.m. And then early Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. So this works with all of your time schedules, plus all of our foreign audience and family that's around the world. So we love hearing from you, and please do that. Also, um, uh, when, you, when you interact with us and you say, hey, I am blessed. I love this ministry. I want to give to it. Um, this is an amazing ministry to sow ground into. I can tell you that I am experienced the fruit of sowing into this ministry. And so please be a part of helping us reach the world farther and deeper with the good news that sets people free. And if you want to do that, you can go to awmi.net slash give. Or again, when you call our prayer ministers, you can get prayer, you can give, and you can get resources. So they're really there to help you do a lot of awesome things. And let me just use Carrie and Mike, her husband, as an example, because she says this is a good ministry to sow into, and you know, when you give. And uh, Carrie went to Russia for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And over there, I mean, they were living on just whatever faith, people Faith and water and air. <laughs> 
<laughs> and did you know for 16 years she stayed over there and most people would think, well, boy, you weren't taking care of yourself, you weren't investing, but when they got back, we won't go through the whole thing, no. but a friend helped them get a house with no interest, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, loaned, no interest, no collateral, sold it, paid him back, they paid money. They wouldn't have had collateral oh. because they had been in Russia all of this time, but a friend helped mm -hmm. them get a house. They sold that house, made a slew of money <laughs> off of it, and then they bought the house they're in, but they were wanting another house, and they just got it today at a yeah. 50000 less than you were going to get it a month ago. Yep. And you know what? It's not coincidence. It's because, man, when you give, God blesses you. You cannot outgive God. No, you can. And if you're just in obedience, I'll just say this: if you're in obedience, because there were times it's like, you know, our salaries like we made twenty-five thousand dollars for the whole year. That's all we made. That was our taxes. You know. Now you aren't talking about when we were in Russia. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make them think that this is what I. So paid anyway, you. can we talk about no? <laughs> no, but it was amazing because when you came back, you know, most people would be like, "You don't have any money. There's no way you can invest and build." But man, I'll just tell you, if you are obedient to God, obedience opens up doors that you couldn't right. open up with just a job and savings and investing. I mean, and, and that's, there's wisdom and, and we have people that teach us that, but you still have to be in obedience to be in that place of faith and favor um, because you've been walking with and the Lord. And you know, this segues into what I was wanting to talk about. I'm wanting to talk about this prayer from Ephesians chapter three, but it's important that you realize that prayer doesn't supersede uh, disobedience. Mm, that's good. And there's a lot of people that are praying that God will bless them the way that Mike and Carrie. Now, don't misunderstand what we're saying. We aren't saying it's because they deserved it that God gives it to them. No, it's the grace of God because they don't do everything perfectly, but they are doing what they know to do. And, and that releases the power of God in your life. When when God leads you in this direction and you just turn around and go that direction, He still loves you and God's grace is the same, but you are hurting yourself and you're yeah. giving Satan inroad. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's really important that you learn a better way to pray. Yeah. And I want to use this prayer out of Ephesians chapter 3. There are two major prayers that Paul prays in Ephesians. The first one is in chapter 1 and that prayer is all about that you would see what you've already got. And that is really important. You could divide the book of uh, Ephesians into two sections and the first three chapters are about what you already have in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then beginning with chapter three through six, it's talking about because you've got these things in Christ, now how are you supposed to live? And so the second half is all talking about the way you should live. So here he prays a prayer in Ephesians chapter three and beginning with verse 14. He says, for this cause I bow my knees under the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of who the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Amen. Man, we could stay on this for an hour. Amen. I'm not going to spend my time there, but it, the strength of God doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. Yep. And most people, it's like they've shut that valve off because they're looking for their help to come from some other source. If they need finances, they go to a bank. They look to a person, they start talking to them. If they need healing, they go to the doctor, they trust medicine. I'm not against any of those things in their proper place, but that ought to be a reaction after you've already gone to God. Everything you receive from the Lord comes through the inner man. And so this is praying that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That's another verse I could spend a lot of time on because again, most people aren't wanting to God to dwell in their hearts by faith. They're wanting to feel it. They're wanting some kind of a supernatural thing that will remove them from faith so that they don't have to stand in faith. Yeah. You know, I just got through with a road trip and I had uh, Richard uh, Harris travel with me to Dallas. And so we drove all the way there and all the way back. And man, we talked the entire time, 11 hours each way. And we got to telling stories and stuff. And it just reminded me of so many things that God has done in my life. But there was a time in my life where I was really pressing and 
uh, nearly trying to force God to give me some kind of an experience where I could see or hear an audible voice from God or have something so supernatural happen that I wouldn't have to operate in faith. And the Lord put that together with a centurion in Matthew chapter 8 and then Thomas in John chapter 20. And the centurion, Jesus said he had the greatest faith he had ever seen because he says, I don't need you to touch me. I don't need you to come here under my roof. You just speak the word. And Jesus says, that's the greatest faith I've ever seen. And you contrast that with Thomas in the 20th chapter of the book of John. And Thomas said about the resurrection, he had been told that Jesus was resurrected, but he didn't see it. And he said, unless I can see with my eyes, unless I can put my finger into the print of the nails, I will not believe. Yeah. Unbelief is a choice, whether you realize it or not. And then finally, Jesus appeared and he was so overwhelmed with seeing him that he didn't even have to stick his finger into the print of the nails and he fell down and he said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you saw me, you believed. Yea, rather blessed are those who have not seen mm -hmm. and yet have believed. That's good. And as I was talking with Richard, we somehow or another got on this and it just reminded me that when the Lord showed me those verses, I made a decision. Right then, and I said, God, I'll take whatever you want to do in my life. I'm not restricting the Lord, but I said, never again am I going to ask you for an audible voice or some physical thing or some great miraculous manifestation. I want to be one that operates in the greatest form that just believes because of the Word. Amen. And you know, that was back in about 1972, I think. And uh, so it's been nearly 50 years. <laughs> That's awesome. And I've never had God speak to me in any audible thing. It's the Word of God. And this is what this is saying, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You know what the Word says. The Word says He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's what the Word says. But most people, it doesn't matter what the Word says. God, I don't feel you. I've had people come up to me before and say, I just don't feel the love of God. Would you please pray that God would pour out His love in my life? No, I won't. Because that is saying that God, your word isn't true. Mm -hmm. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 5, I believe it is, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So the Word says that the love of God has already been shed abroad. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then verse 9 says, much more now. And so I could go on and on. There are many scriptures that talk about that God is with you, that His love has been given unto you, and yet most people say, but I don't feel it. And so most people don't want the Lord to dwell in their hearts by faith. They want the Lord to dwell there by feeling, by some kind of tangible thing that they can base their faith on something that's tangible instead of the written Word of God. And let me just say to you that one of the reasons that you don't always experience something dramatic is not because God loves you less. It's because God loves you so much. He's trying to draw you up to His level where you operate by faith instead of by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. That should be the normal Christian life, and yet the average Christian <laughs> walks by sight and not by faith. And I tell you, you I, man, I just got so many things about this I'd love to say. I don't have time to say them all. Let me just go on or I'm never going to get to the rest of this. Mm -hmm. So he's praying that Christ would dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Of course, the scripture says in 1 John 4, 8 and verse 16 that God is love. So this is talking about you being rooted and grounded in love, in God, in Jesus' love for you specifically. You could say that you have to be rooted and grounded in the grace that was brought unto us through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you, ha if you firmly understand the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, not performance-based relationship, but grace, then here's what will happen. It says that you will be able to comprehend with all saints mm -hmm. what is the breadth and length and depth and height mm -hmm. and to know the love of Christ 
which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So in this uh, 18th verse, it says that there is height and depth and length and breadth. In other words, it's not uh, just a one-dimensional thing. There's a lot of people that will say, I know that God loves me. But man, there are depths and heights and length and breadth to that. You know, I've been walking with the Lord. I mean, seeking Him with everything I've got for 53 years. And I can guarantee you, I have not plumbed the depths of Jesus' love. Amen. I've experienced the love of God in tangible ways, in ways that uh, have revolutionized my life. I know that Carrie's testimony mm -hmm. is exactly the same. I've heard her mm -hmm. teach on this. And she, you know, it's hard to teach on the love of God because everybody says, oh, I know God loves Sunday me. Sunday school. <laughs> but, they're, but they're looking on the surface level. There's depth to it. Mm -hmm. And I heard Carrie preach one of our messages at the Summer Family Bible Conference on love that was just... Powerful. So anyway, my point is that there's more than just the surface level in saying that God loves me, but He not only loves you, He likes you. Amen. <laughs> he's pleased with you. And I know that some of you think, no, He's not because you aren't pleased with yourself. But that's because you're looking on the outside. God looks on the heart. And when you get born again, you're a completely brand new person on the inside. Most of you don't have a clue. And I'm not saying this to put anybody down. I'm just saying I deal with millions of people, thousands of people personal. And I can tell you that the reasons they're struggling is because they don't really understand the depth and the length and the height and the breadth of the love of God. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, that faith works by love. And if you really understand the love of God, I guarantee you faith will operate in your life. If you're struggling to operate in faith, then you're struggling to understand the love of God. And I know some of you, it's like you can't connect those dots. You think, those, no, those are separate things. I know that God loves me, but man, I'm just not sure that He's going to come through. It's because you don't understand the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of the love of God. You may have a surface level. But God not only loves you in the sense that He died for you and, and purchased eternity for you so that you wouldn't go to hell, but He has so totally transformed you that He loves you just as much as He loves Jesus. Amen. He is just as pleased with you. Now, I'm not talking about your actions and your thoughts all the time, but I'm talking about if you've made Jesus your Lord, you were born again in His likeness. And according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness. That verse right there shows you that there is imperfect love. But the way your love is made perfect, uh, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as He is, so are we in this world. That's not talking about your physical body. It's not talking about your mental, emotional part, but in your spirit, you are identical to Jesus because it's His spirit that was put in you. The Lord took away that sinful, dead nature that you had on the inside of you, and when you got born again, you became a new creature, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. And in your spirit, you have this love of God, and God loves you. And God is pleased with that born-again part of you even when your physical body and your soul are messing up. Now, does that mean that you're free then just to go by the fact that, well, I'm changed in my spirit and so it doesn't matter what I do out here? Well, it's going to affect you and your relationship with other people. It will give Satan an inroad into your life. And I guarantee you, if you wallow in the mud, you're going to get dirty. <laughs> you are going to have problems and stuff. So as much as you can, you need to purify yourself and live and walk That's with good. God. But when it comes to relating to God, God loves you because He is love and not because you are lovely. <laughs> you have to learn the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth. And then this 19th verse, it says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, Mm -hmm. that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. Now, if it passes knowledge, how can you know it? The answer to that is those are two different words in the Greek. One of them is talking about just a mental uh, ascent, just, under, uh, just knowledge of something, facts. 
But the first word that is used is talking about an experience. Yeah. In the Bible, it says like in Genesis chapter 4, that Adam knew his wife Eve and that she conceived and bore a son. Mm -hmm. And all the way through the Bible, the word know is used for intimacy in the physical relationship, talking about the intimacy that produces a child. But when it comes to relating to God, this isn't talking about just knowing about God. This is talking about literally experiencing the love of God. So let's put all this back together. He's praying that Christ would dwell in your hearts by faith and that you would uh, understand the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of the love of God. And if you do that, then if you experience that love instead of just mental assent, just facts, understanding about it, it says that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. Good. You know, the fullness of God here, you could just go through and you could name all kinds of things. Healing, perfect health is part of the fullness that God has purchased for us. Mm -hmm. Prosperity, joy, peace, favor, like yeah. we were talking about Mike and Carrie, getting the very house that they wanted when somebody else had put a contract down on it, that fell through and they got it for less. Yeah. That's favor. This is part of what Jesus has purchased and this is what happens when you understand the love of God. Amen. You know, I don't, Carrie hadn't told me about these things, but I just know Mike and Carrie that when they didn't get the house that they wanted, they probably were disappointed, but they didn't fall apart. No. They didn't get mad at God. God, I'm going to quit serving you if things don't work. See, because they kept walking in the love of God and know that God loves them, it'll either work out or God will give you something better. In fact, when our kids were disappointed, before and we just said, listen, God, if God has something better for us, he'll show, he, God loves us. He has something for us. So it's a great testimony to our kids because they saw how God yeah. did something that, because he loves us. And see, when you understand <laughs> the height, the depth, the length and the breadth, yeah. and you experience God's love instead of just saying that God loves you, well, then that produces this kind of peace yep. that you can sit there and do things and, and things will work out to your advantage. Yep. I'm telling you, there's a lot of you who watch this program mm. and I know that you love God and I know that you know that God loves you, but you don't have the full revelation of it. And so what do you do? You can pray this exact prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a prayer that Paul prayed. It's written in the Word of God. We know it's Scripture. We know it's according to the Word of God. So just pray it and put your name in there. Pray it this way, and I did this when I first got started, and I really struggled to understand the love of God because I'd been taught that I was just an old sinner saved mm -hmm. by grace and that God loved me to the degree that He would forgive my sins and I wouldn't go to hell, but I, I didn't believe He liked me <laughs> and that He, he really yeah. loved me and was pleased with me. Man, that was grating against all of my religious traditions yeah. and doctrines of man. So I used to pray this exact prayer and put my name in there. And here's the way I would pray it. And say, I'd say, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me, Andrew, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might in his spirit, by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith, that I, Andrew, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Yep. And that Andrew, I will know the love of God which passeth knowledge. And then I, Andrew, will be filled with all the fullness of God. That's good. This is a prayer that you know it's according to the Word of God. And all you got to do is pray, put your name in there and pray it and mix it with faith and I guarantee you, you'll start understanding and seeing the love of God in a new way. I guarantee you that when I got turned on to the Lord, it didn't just instantly happen. I, I don't know how many of you have heard my testimony, but I had a miraculous encounter with the Lord March the 23rd, 1968. I encountered His love, and for four and a half months, I was caught up in the presence of God. But that was feeling, and that was emotional. And did you know after four and a half months, that wore off? And then desperation set in to the point that I actually spent 13 months in Vietnam asking God to kill me because I just was so hungry for God mm. that I felt like I could never obtain to it in this life. 
And so I was literally desperate to get back to that place and I didn't know how to get there. And out of nothing but just sheer boredom because I, I didn't know what else <laughs> to do, I started studying the Word in Vietnam up to 10, 15 hours a day and then praying another three or four hours a day. Wow. And did you know God's Word began to reveal His love to me and I started receiving the love of God by faith, not by feeling. That's good. And that's what literally transformed my life. This physical, emotional experience got my attention, but it's the Word of God that sustained me. He, he dwelt in my heart by faith. And I started praying this prayer, and I'm still getting a revelation of it. But you can do that. Every person watching this Bible study tonight, you can pray this. And I promise you, if you go to understanding the love of God, you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. Again, I go back to Galatians 5, 6. I've already quoted that. But it says that, um, that faith works by love. For circumcision doesn't avail anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. And I tell you, love will cause faith to just abound in your life. So this is really what you need. If, you, if you're struggling to believe and receive, you're struggling to believe God's love. Again, you may have a surface level, but you're struggling to understand the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of it. And so if you could understand that God is love and that He loves you not because you're lovely, but because He is love, and if you could receive that, I guarantee you, it'll just make the power of God come alive in your heart. Amen. Amen. That's good. You got something to add to that? Oh, yeah, all the time. No, I just, you know, when I, we're looking at so many of the questions here about, you know, how to, how to experience the love of God. And it's interesting because when you get a revel, how to experience love and how to experience faith, and those are two things that people kind of struggle with. I don't feel like I have my faith is big enough and I don't feel like I know, know and understand God's love. When you get into the word and you realize how much God loves you, I'll just tell you the love of God creates an attitude of faith. Mm -hmm. And it's really powerful because when you know God loves me, it's like, you know what? If God loves me, of course he's going to heal me. If God loves me, of course he's going to provide. And it's actually the love of God, that realization of the love of God that produces an attitude of faith because, you know, like these promises are made out of God's love for me. So it's real. It's true. It's good. I'm going to confess it. So then all of a sudden your faith is attached to this promise, but it's birthed out of this revelation of God's love. That Your kids me. expect to receive from you because they mm -hmm. know that you love them. Amen. But if, they, if I was at your house and your kid came in and said, Mom, I know I didn't make my bed today and I know I haven't done everything I was supposed to, but I'm hungry. Could I please have something? And if they fell down on their face and says, please forgive me and feed me, I'd think you aren't showing your love to them. <laughs> no. They don't do that. Even when no. they've messed up, they know that love yep. overcomes that and that you're going to exactly. take care of them. So when a Christian is sitting here and they, they know that they're forgiven and yet they aren't sure that God loves them enough to supply their need. Yep. They just really don't have a good re revelation of love. Amen. Well, we've got some really great questions you guys have asked about the love of God and faith and prayer. And so we're going to try to get through as many of these as possible. So Mandy asked this on chat. It's a little bit longer when it says this. In choosing to fully put all faith in God in all circumstances, is it as simple as just making the mental choice? I have a deep relationship with God, but there are some areas in my life where I still worry about money or relationships. I feel like I just have to choose to close my eyes, trust and walk forward. Is it that simple? Will the feeling of faith or would faith follow if I choose to walk by faith? Well, I don't think faith is a feeling. So the way that that's stated is that if I'll just do these things and choose the right things, eventually I'll feel all of this. I don't feel faith. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, this is hard to describe because feeling is a subjective thing and it's different for yeah. every person. I, I have a confidence in God, but I guarantee you there's thoughts that bombard my mind. Like we've, done, we've built $120 million worth of stuff in nine years above our normal expenses. I would say that that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, God did some miracles for us. But did you man. know that during that time, I had times that I thought, man, are we ever going to get this finished? Is this yep. going to work? There's times that I had to send people home and say, I don't have any money to continue and things like this. And so I had thoughts come to me, but I have just made a decision that I'm going to believe what God's Word says more than what circumstances say and more than what I feel and what I think. And so faith isn't a feeling. Faith is a decision that you make based on God's promises 
But the more you do it, I can't say that those thoughts I had tormented me or caused any pain because I recognize that they're just natural. It's good. Yeah. Carnal thoughts. I don't deny that they come, but I deny that that's me. That's mm -hmm. just human yeah. mm -hmm. stuff. That's just human thinking. And I rejected them and I went by God's word. And so I never, I never had depression, fear, discouragement, but I had thoughts yeah. and I just refused to think them. So uh, and as you do that over a period of time, I actually maintain my joy and maintain my feelings through that time, but it's not because I didn't have thoughts. If I'd gave place to them, I could be as discouraged as anybody. Amen. And I think when you start walking in faith, there becomes this, it's, you start to experience the fruit of the Spirit, which you start to experience the peace and the joy and the patience of God. You see things with a different, it's not necessarily feelings, but it's the fruit of the Spirit that's starting to then re be released because your, your eyes are on the Spirit, not on the flesh. That's really good. The fruit of the Spirit is not feelings, mm -mm. but it produces peace and love and joy. But those, they aren't feelings the way most people think no. because you can have peace when the world is literally crashing around you. Yeah. I've had situations where mm -hmm. people were dying around me and mm -hmm. everything in the natural looked like it was just totally destroyed and yet I had peace. It was a, it was a fruit of the Spirit yep. and some people would call it a feeling, but it's really not because it's totally disconnected from what's in the natural. It's based on the Spirit. Yeah, because when you set your eyes on the Spirit, you will walk after the Spirit. So you're going to experience all all that fruit and all that kingdom attitude and kingdom assurance and, and confidence. But if your eyes are on the flesh, then you can have peace one minute, get a phone call and lose it in the next moment because it's your eyes are on the flesh. So set your mind on things of flesh, you will walk after it. Set your mind on things of Spirit, you'll walk after it. And I've had people that hated me and were doing bad things to me and <laughs> I just felt love. But it's not a physical feeling, it's the fruit of the Spirit. That's a good way to play it. Amen. Amen. Okay, so V on chat asks this. She says, does God allow us to press Him for audible, visible manifestations? Yes, I believe that you can, you can persist and get things from God that He really doesn't want you to have. <laughs> God does not control us sovereignly and just make things work. And if you keep pressing in an area, you can get things from God that really aren't God's best. And uh, there's a lot of script scriptural examples. God doesn't control us. And if you just persist, you can, you can have something happen, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily God's best. That's good. All right, so another question here. So Juliette asked this on YouTube. She says, do you believe that God's love will drive us towards good works and living in a way that glorifies Him? Or do you think we need the fear of not receiving reward in heaven too? Well, I could say that personally, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that, but personally, there is no fear of not getting a reward that motivates me. It's totally the love of God that motivates yeah. me. Second Corinthians chapter five, the apostle Paul said, for the love of Christ constrains us. I think that's verse 15 or 16. Mm. And the love of Christ is what constrained Paul and that's what constrains me. The reason I serve God is out of love for him and I'm aware that rewards are coming and I have thought that I don't want to stand before God and not have any rewards and be embarrassed because I didn't do what He told me to, but that's not what drives me. Yeah. It's my relationship with God that drives me. You know, I love Carrie. We have a great relationship and stuff and, and I don't want Carrie to be mad at me, but I don't treat her right just so that she'll treat me right. Yeah. I treat her right because I love her. He harasses me because, you know, he loves that's, me. That's I right. Mean, that's how it, it works. the highest form of flattery around <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so a question here. Um, Claudia says this, how do you know when you are completely walking in faith? Praying for my husband's healing for a while and how to handle all the things at home without him, it feels like I have to fight back wrong thoughts all the time. You know, I can remember the exact time that it finally dawned on me that I'm walking in faith. I was in Childress, Texas, and so this would have been in 1976. And I, I got my life changed in 68, and I really struggled for the first couple of years until I got the revelation of grace. I experienced grace, but I didn't understand it for two or three years. 
And so it would have been 73, 74 when I really started growing and understanding. And in 1976, I was pastoring a little church in Childress, Texas, and I was praying for somebody. And it, I, I remember this day that I was no longer trying to believe. I was believing. Hmm. I knew I was believing. It wasn't like this was something I, I felt unbelief, but I was going to act in faith anyway. I was really believing God, and that was That's in good. 1976. And so good. to answer this question, I honestly don't know how to tell you other than if you just start moving in that direction and acting on what the Word says instead of what you feel. And if you do that over a prolonged period of time, you'll, you'll pass a mark someplace where all of a sudden you realize that, hey, I am actually believing yeah. God, and it's actually coming out of my heart, not out of my head, but it's a process. That's good. So a uh, question here. Um, God told me my heart doesn't believe He loves me. And even though she thought it could, she um, is just dealing with tossed around from family to family's houses and most of my life and had less blessings than all the other people. There's a lot more to it, but I don't have a mother or siblings to grow up with, which seems to have left a void with a lot of trauma. This is a, uh, Adora asked this. She says, um, a lot of trauma, accidents, all these kind of things. It's hard for my heart to believe God loves me. How do I believe and get that love to go deep enough in my heart despite all these last 30 years of bad circumstances and trauma? Adora was Adora. the one. So I don't mean this critical, but Adora, you are trying to base God's love for you based on some precedent in your life, some you're trying to model it after something and because you haven't had love extended towards you, therefore you're struggling to receive because you're looking to receive this love through a person or through experience or something that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. God's kind of love, if you had the best parent in the world, it would not be a real good example of God's kind of love. Just God's shoulders. love for us is so much infinitely greater than any person can ever do. So Adora, what you've got to do is you've just got to go to the Word of God. Yeah. And as you study it, pray this prayer, just like I said earlier. Say, God, open up the eyes of my understanding. That's Ephesians 1 in chapter 3. Show me the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of the love of God so that I could experience it. And if you will pray that and look for it not to come through a person or through an experience, but to just come by revelation of the Holy Spirit, you can receive that love. And I tell you, if you are going to constantly just have to have something in the natural to show you the love of God, you're going to really limit what God can do. Revelation is just yeah. so much better than that. You know, I grew up without a dad. My dad actually died when I was two and was raised from the dead, but he was sickly until I was 12, and then he died physically. So he never did much with me. And, and then from 12 years old, I didn't have a dad. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, well, then you've got to have this problem and this problem and this problem. But you know what happened? When my dad died, I turned to Psalms chapter 27 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I read that verse, and it yeah. says, When your father or mother forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. And even though my dad didn't forsake me, he wasn't there. Yeah. And I, the Lord just told me, I'll be your dad. And did you know, I turned to the Lord, and I mean, God did That's things awesome. for me that a physical dad could have never done. And I never felt bitter. I never felt rejection. I never, I never went through any of those things. That's awesome. And it was because... I was looking to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit can reveal love to you better than a physical person, a physical experience can reveal it. Mm -hmm. Now, am I saying that your past doesn't matter? Well, no, it's an obstacle. And if you're focused on it, it could be a barrier that will hinder you from the love of God. But Adora, if you'll look past these negative things in your life and pray this prayer and say, God, reveal your love to me. He can reveal it to you and you could have a greater love revelation of God's love than a person who is looking for it through some person. Yeah. And you've, if you've watched Bible study before, we've, I've said this, um, where, you know, ask God, we, we always say this, ask God, Lord, show me how much you love me today. And that's not a selfish prayer. You're just asking God in the fullness of his nature. God is love. First John four, eight, God, you said you are love. And I, 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 
I want to experience it. And so, boy, there's, we taught our kids to say, ask the Lord to show you how much he loves you. And there's little things like, mom, look how much Jesus loves me. And you start looking, your heart and your eyes start to see the love of God. So you can say, well, this has happened and that's happened. Just say, Lord, show me how much you love me. And all of a sudden you'll start to see all the good versus the enemy saying all these negative things all the time. Yeah, let me balance that by saying that this is, this prayer is, is asking God to show you the height, the depth, and the length, and the breadth. And that's mm -hmm. what Carrie's talking yep. about. But it's not saying, God, do you love me? No. I don't feel I believe anything. it. Show me. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a prayer of unbelief. I don't believe you love me until I can feel it. That's wrong. But if you'll say, Father, I know you love me, and I believe it. Now just reveal it to me. Give yeah. me revelation. That's what Carrie's talking about. That's what this prayer's talking about. Amen. So uh, a question says, the Bible talks about the a fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. I've always understood that meant a passion, pleading, reminding, asking. Is that correct? No. Matter of fact, the more you understand the love of God, you, it's, again, let me use the example of Carrie and her kids. She knows what her kids need and she knows they need food and they need clothes and they need all of these things. And she's anticipating, and these things are already provided. And again, if they were to walk in and say, Mom, I haven't done everything right, but please could I have a bicycle or, you know, wherever it is that they're in their development, that would be really unbelief. Yeah. But they can walk in and say, Mom, I know you love me. And man, I need something to eat or I want a bike or they can just say something and she'll do whatever they want. Yeah. So there's still a requesting, but it's not begging, it's not pleading. When it says the effectual fervent prayer, that's not talking about pleading and begging. Yep. It just talks about that, man, you love God. You're passionate about it. My kids know this and they, oh boy, they over vacation this last week. They worked dad. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Dad, hey, if it's possible, you know, for us to do some things together, to have some time together, could we buy this Lego set? So, you know, $250 later, oh, uh, you know, the big sets, um, you wow. know, they're walking out and Dad's having all this time, you know, with the kids. But they knew, it's like, Dad, can we spend time with you building this? Man, oh, and Legos. it wasn't mani it wasn't manipulation, it was really, and then the whole vacation, you're the best parents in the whole world. Stop it, yes. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Man, the Lego sets we bought our kids were like, I don't know, two, three dollars. Yeah, but when it's like the death of Indra, wow. you know, Star Wars, you know, it's a different story. But, but anyway, <laughs> the point is God loves y'all more than Amen. more than any of them. There's not a one of us. I've been spending 53 years seeking God and I know that God loves me and I just had a great time with the Lord today talking to him and about things. But man, I still am desiring to know God more. You know, I had a, a man uh, last year, John Donnelly, you know him mm -hmm. over in Scotland. Yeah. And he's on my board of directors. And he, he told me he had been praying and God told him that he would give me anything that I wanted. Yep. It was like Solomon. What do you want? I'll give you anything you want. And so I didn't want to waste that. And I spent about two or three months praying and saying, God, what is it? Because we need... We need millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to fulfill things. I want to reach more people. I want to go on more television. I, want, I was thinking about what is it that I want? And about two or three months later, I was praying about that and saying, God, what is it? What would be the right thing to ask for? And I just said, what I really want is to know you more than anything else. Yeah. And man, as soon as I said it, it's just like the Lord sealed that and said, that's it. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else. All the money we'll need and stuff will come. So anyway, here I am 53 years into my walk with the Lord and yet I'm still seeking to know God more than I've ever known yeah. Him. Amen. And I tell you, once you taste of it, it's like you never get over that. You become addicted to it. And so I want to encourage you that God loves you more than you could ever know mm -hmm. and you just need to yeah. seek Him. And take this prayer in Ephesians chapter yeah, 3 and good. just pray it for yourself. And I promise you, God wants to reveal His love to you mm -hmm. more Amen. than you want it. Amen. You don't have to beg God. It's just like you crack the door open a little bit and He'll, he'll knock the whole door down <laughs> to get into you and release His love. So.
Amen. We just want to share that with you. God loves you. Amen. And any what we also do is any questions throughout the whole week. So when you join us tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, if we didn't get to your question, then every Tuesday afternoon on Facebook Live. So if you've never been on our Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook site, go to that, hit like. And then we're going to do, we do the best of questions. So you're going to even have an opportunity to get more of your questions answered on Tuesday afternoon. So um, we would love to do that. And again, call our prayer ministry, receive prayer. And also Gospel Truth, GTTV, gospeltruth.tv is our online television platform. It is amazing. We're not only Andrew, but tons of amazing faith ministers with the love of God. Tons. And tons. Awesome. They're great. Are they heavy? <laughs> Full of the word. There's Fullness of God. Of it's heavy. So it's awesome. join us for that. So, so thank anyway, you guys. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, remember, you can call in yeah. that number, 719-635-1111. And there's people that will pray with you and they can give you more materials that we have yep. on the love of God. So call that number. God bless you. See you next week. Bye. I want to let you know that we're moving all of our live stream productions of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College to our gospeltruth.tv format. We have a lot of teaching there, not only of myself, but many other people. But now we're moving all of the live streams there. So if you ever want to watch any live stream that we are producing, the place to go is gospeltruth.tv for all of our live streaming as well as our regular programming. You will be blessed.